What up Gripsters and random YouTubers, Evan here for Grips.com, continuing with Project Get Me Stacking. Today's question comes from Mitch and it reads, Hey Evan, I'm mostly a live player, so I can't use programs like Poker Tracker to save my hand histories. I know that saving hands for later review is important, so my question is, what's the best way to go about it when playing live? And this is a fantastic question from Mitch and something that I struggled with earlier on in my career. Taking good notes is essential to your development as a player because it allows you to accurately remember what happened during your session so that you can get quality feedback on it later from the players who you want to get feedback from and who you respect. So I personally have never taken notes when playing cash poker, so I'm going to use my tournament experience to respond to that question. In the past, there were four methods that I tried to take my notes down. The first method I took for saving my hands was trying to keep everything in my head. And that was pretty exhausting. I remember I was playing a live tournament and I was trying to remember everything that happened and as soon as I made one mistake, I just couldn't stop thinking about that mistake because I had to save it in my head so that I could talk to my friends about it on break and I just kept replaying it and replaying it and replaying it and eventually I went on total tilt and blew off my stack, I think within the first couple of hours because I couldn't get over what had happened because I was thinking about it so much, I couldn't get it out of my mind. So keeping it all in my head, completely exhausting, way too much, really felt weighed down when I tried that approach. The second method that I tried for taking notes was writing down every single detail about every hand that I played. So every time I entered a pot, I would write down what cards I had, I would write down every action that I could, every board texture, every little bet size, every single detail. And while this gave me a very accurate picture of what had happened during the session, it left me totally disconnected from the game. In fact, I was probably spending something like 80% of my time at the table looking down into my cell phone because I was just taking these rigorous notes and I was missing all the action that was coming around me. So while I was getting really good memory, of what was happening during the session, I was missing out on the action that was happening around me and I wasn't in the game flow, which cost me future expected value. So that method, writing down everything, was not the way to go either. Now the third method that I tried was to just not take notes at all and just ignore and forget everything that happened during the session. This allowed me to be, be very present during the session because I was very focused on the game flow and paying attention to what was happening around me at the table, but I wasn't able to get feedback on my play because when I would try to recite hands to my friends after the session, I would be missing a lot of details. You know, I'd be like, you know, there was a race from middle position or, or maybe it was early position and I think he bet like half pot on the flop, but maybe it was three quarters. I don't know, it's not that important, but it's so important. Every detail is super important. So while I was able to feel a lot more clear in the head when I wasn't writing everything down, and while I was able to pay more attention to the table when I wasn't putting any of my time into my cell phone, I wasn't able to get great feedback about my play, which meant I would play great, but I wasn't improving my play. So in the short run, it was an okay strategy, but in the long run, I was missing out. And then I felt that I found the sweet spot. And that was that I would have my cell phone and I would write down you know, my whole cards, I would write down a couple of the bet sizes, and I would leave it at that. I would just put the key information about the key hands that I played. Now note, I didn't write down every hand I played, just the most relevant and important hands I played, the ones that I felt there was a lot to learn from or things that I was very unsure about. And when I took this practice, I was able to stay very present with the game and at the same time I was able to write down a lot of information so that I could get feedback on it and after the session was done, I would fill in the blanks. I thought I'd found the promised land, turns out I was wrong. Two years ago, at the Falls View Poker Classic, I sat down with my buddy Matt Jarvis, and I was like, hey man, like you've been a really successful player, you've had really great results, like how do you do it? How do you stay sharpened on your game? And out of his backpack, he pulled out this novel. And he's like, here, check it out. And I looked at it, and it was all the hands he had played from 
his tournaments with all the bet sizes and everything. And I'm like, dude, how do you do this? How do you have all this? How do you have all the time to get that? And then how do you like get it to yourself? And he said, oh, it's easy. I just open up a Google Doc or I open up an email and I've already got it formatted with all the blind levels and stuff. So I just fill in the blanks and then I send myself an email at the end of the day. And I was just blown away. It was absolutely the best method I'd ever heard. It was all the ideas I'd had together and made even more efficient because he could email it to himself. And in addition to that, he could instantly email it to the other people that he wanted feedback from. So it was easier for his coaches to review his play and give him the most valuable thing, which is immediate feedback on his play. Learning this technique was a real game changer for me because not only did it allow me to get really efficient with my note-taking abilities and allow me to stay more present with the game, it opened up the door to getting feedback from the players that I wanted it from. This also showed me the concept that when you put in work beforehand and prepare things, they become a lot easier in the moment. So you're not doing all these audibles, typing in all these blind levels, typing in all these extra things. You have your shortcuts, you have your document, you have your format ready to go, and all you do is fill in the blanks. It's a really amazing technique that will allow you to document your experience at the table so that you can both get feedback on it and have a more accurate description of what actually happened because it's pretty common knowledge that human beings like to exaggerate and change the past a little bit from what actually happened. Whereas if you write it down in the moment, you will have the true reality of what happened and you can truly analyze your play and get the best feedback on it. So Mitch, Next time you're at the poker table, the live poker table, I invite you to try this technique. Have a Word document or a Google document ready to go and put those notes down in there. When the session is done, send an email to yourself and review it a couple days later. Also, copy a couple people on the email as well so that they can read through the hand history as well and give you their feedback. The most important things to include are, you know, your position, your range, what you think your opponent's range is, the blind size, the bet size, and any dynamics that were going on. Because if there were dynamics at play, emotions coming into play, those are going to affect the decision making and they're going to affect what the best play is. So to get the best feedback, make sure you include all those details in your email. If you integrate this exercise into your poker practice, I think that you'll look to experience three benefits. The first is that you'll be more present with the game because you'll be looking for the little details that you want to include in your notes. And at the same time, you won't be spending too much time taking the notes. You'll be spending most of your time looking for the information that's going to go in your notes. The second thing is you're probably going to be a lot more confident in your reads because you're going to have past information on the players you're playing against. You're building up a database on them and it'll be factual information that you accumulated throughout the session. And the third thing is you're probably going to feel a lot lighter and a lot clearer because instead of having to keep all this stuff up in that little or big old head of yours, it's going to be safely stored away in a document so your mind can relax, let it go, and let you do what you want to do, which is play poker. I invite you to try this in your next session and please let me know in the comments what your experience is with that and any benefits you receive or any challenges you run into. All right, and that's uh, everything I got to say on the topic of how to take great notes at the poker table. I hope that you found this answer insightful and informative and it can help you take your game to the next level. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, check out my other playlists that are all part of Project Get Me Stacking. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can get notified every time a new video goes live. Um, so if you want to do that, click that red button below the screen and subscribe. And when you're done with that, you know what to do. Take what you learned, go out there, and get stacking. Peace.